Um, the, the flesh hoop on this one is a round one. It's the original flesh hoop that came with this banjo. Um, and it is, um, it is a round flesh hoop, um, which is one of the reasons that I felt comfortable using the acoustical ceiling hanger material. Um, for the rest of the flesh hoops that I've used, and that is that it's uh, the Gibson originally used round on this, so it, it seems to seems to be sufficient. And uh, I'll play more of this later on, but uh, just to give you an idea of what it sounds like, that's up near the fingerboard or on the fingerboard. Here's. As you can see, this is a fairly lively little instrument with steel strings, and um, it sounds good with with the uh, with the head on it. Okay, hope you're not getting seasick with me moving the camera around so much, but I'll save a little bit of stuff. This is my other main playing banjo. Um, this is the Stuart, uh, <clears throat> and um, once again, you can see the the uh, area, the extra head material that comes out on the side when you're trimming it. This one is a little bit more careful about trimming. I later on got a little concerned that I might actually nick the head, so I've started leaving a little bit more extra. Um, this one also has a pick guard. This has a couple of non-standard but old um, features on it. I, I do like having head guards on my banjos. Um, and I do the muting on the fingerboard instead. Um, and uh, so what, what that allows is a little bit more freedom uh, to, from deadening the tone with your fingers on the head. I'm a three finger picker as you'll see a little bit later. So, and um, once again the uh, flesh hoop, this came out better than the first one that I did which was the uh, banjo ukulele. This is actually the second one I did. And got a couple of bunches there. Uh, after a while, you get the technique for pulling up the the um, head down a little bit better. The material is actually remarkably uh, remarkably resilient for for um, pulling it around these rings. So anyway, there we go. Again, I hope nobody's getting seasick. This is not a major production, but I did want to show these. And this one, uh, let's see, I don't remember if I had any dimples or not on this one. I think I think there's one right next to the tailpiece there. And uh, you can see a little bit of it in the shadow there. But that's the only one that happened on this head. So, And this has nylon strings. And you'll hear more of that later on. Um, you can note, if you look at it there, a little bit of darkness right next to the first string. That is um, pick wear on the head. I don't think it's actually wear as much as the nickel silver leaving a little bit of a, of a mark there. I could probably wash it off. It's still as smooth as the rest of the head, so I don't sense or feel any or see any kind of wear that's actually happening to it. But, but it's marking a little bit from the finger picks. Um, and a little bit of dirt and stuff, not much. This is a fairly tight head on this one. Um, it actually has remarkable volume for nylon strings um, and a nice tone. We'll, we'll play it a little bit more later. This is my Stuart MacDonald from around 1978, something like that. Um, once again, you can see the edges. Uh, I was allowing a little bit more space there because I didn't want to accidentally nick, nick the head. Um, if you haven't seen this head material before, uh, let me get a flashlight so you can see some of the grain in it. Um, hope that shows what I'm seeing. But you, you can actually see, um, very, very similar to um, to skinhead markings on there. 
It's, it's a nice material. Good looking. In natural light it looks just like a uh, just like a nice nice piece of skin uh, stretched over the head. 